Here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, sometimes the winter season is unbearable. Now, can you imagine living on the streets in those sub-zero temperatures? It is unsafe, and some have even died here. Yet thousands more, without roofs over their heads, find themselves in these streets every year. Fortunately, the SSYC, an umbrella body made up of South Sudanese youth from across Canada, is out on the streets today, putting smiles on those homeless faces. Members of the SSYC came out to hand out gift hampers on the streets of Calgary, and I tagged along to witness their noble act of kindness. Here's a little background on the SSYC from one of the founding members. In short, the inception of uh, the South Sudanese Youth of Canada was largely driven by a deep-rooted desire to create a space where our young minds could come together, share experiences, and find solace in a supportive environment. We recognize uh, the urgent need to address mental health issues, as well as other issues um, within our community, uh, particularly within the context of the South Sudanese diaspora. As many of you know, there is uh, not a shortage of registered South Sudanese groups uh, um, out there. Um, uh, however, many of these groups have focused historically on the needs of um, elders within the community. Uh, and many have failed to address the issues that uh, plague the young people within uh, the South Sudanese community. So the um, South Sudanese Youth of Canada was um, conceptualized in 2017 and realized with our initial conference in 2018 uh, and aimed to do one of three things, right? So first, to connect young people um, with a heritage from South Sudan across Canada, um, and two, to try and influence the culture within um, the South Sudanese community within the Canadian context uh, in such a way that would uh, move us forward. And finally, to try and change and challenge uh, some of the negative uh, images of South Sudanese young people uh, within Canadian um, society. Uh, although we are not a registered group, uh, um, we do have a formalized structure. So annually, young people that want to participate in realizing a South Sudanese uh, um, or an SSYC um, event uh, will come together uh, and uh, categorize themselves in one of three groups. So sponsors, conference planning, and um, communications and marketing. Each of those uh, groups are self-explanatory. Um, and following the uh, realization of the 2018 conference, we added a community and development initiative, which would try and realize um, initiatives throughout the year, rather than just uh, um, the annual conferences. I have suggested to the SSYC that they register their group so that they can acquire a charity number, so that they can easily obtain donations from good-hearted people like yourselves out there and it's also good for accountability. SSYC has all their sponsors and documents on their use of funds and all activities they have undertaken thus far on the website, which is available to the public. That is thumbs up to the youth of the SSYC because cultivating integrity, prudence, diligence, and honesty are factors which demonstrate sound leadership. That means Many donors will not shy away from donating for fear of their funds being misused. This is Olympic Plaza, the main city square in the heart of downtown Calgary. A lot of homeless people call this place home. One of those who found themselves on the streets here is Mama Yom Makor. Here, they call her Mama Yom Dit, meaning grandma in the Dinka dialect. She is one of the elders, keeping a semblance of family on the streets and her family is a large one, made up of a diverse group of people from different backgrounds. She considers everyone members of her family, regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, or age. To Mama Yomdi, everybody is African. <laughs> Mama Yomdi acted as the liaison between members of the SSYC and her street family. She even helped in directing the distribution of the gift hampers. 
According to the Calgary Homeless Foundation, 436 people experiencing homelessness have died this year on the streets of Calgary. That's a significant increase from 239 homeless people who are reported to have died by the end of 2022. Several factors contributed to the drastic jump in the death toll this year, including a shortage of affordable housing, a toxic drug supply, and illnesses brought on by living rough on the street. A study by the School of Public Policy at the University of Calgary suggests that over 100,000 to 125,000 Calgarians were at the risk of homelessness. The research used data from 2016 and settled on 115,000 people as the average, although the actual number is likely higher in 2023. The report suggests that the federal, provincial and city government should tap into relatively inexpensive support systems to help the homeless. The study focused on Calgarians who have just enough income to keep a roof over their heads, despite doing everything they can to minimize costs. You look like a man. Don't wipe it. 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 The researchers used 2016 data to crunch their numbers because the latest data from the 2020 census conducted by Statistics Canada, the main body that collects, tabulates and collects other data in Canada, was affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Ron Nibon and Rita Wilkins, researchers from the School of Public Policy at the University of Calgary, estimate that in Calgary alone, approximately 115,000 adults and children living in about 40,000 households were at the risk of falling into the dark pit of homelessness. Although both the federal and provincial governments have focused on trying to rehouse people who are already homeless, the researchers think the government should pay more attention towards making sure people never fall into homelessness in the first place. Many hardworking people in Calgary have minimal wiggle room in their budget as they struggle to keep up with mortgage payments, bills and daily expenses. Some even skip meals hoping to reduce their expenses as food prices have also hit the roof. And not many people have access to subsidized housing because there are few available and the waiting list is very long. The report says inadequate income supports and housing policies that leave rents too high relatively to income are forcing Calgarians to make difficult choices. Therefore, investment in rental subsidies and income support systems would make a big difference for over 50,000 households in Calgary who are at risk of homelessness. The study also suggests that reducing rents by 10% could cut down the at-risk population by over 40%. Ultimately, the long-term solution is to build more affordable housing that people with low income can access. Above I call him Gal Ked above I am this. Yeah. My name is Yom. Yes. Makor. Hi. Hi. And I think the name Ju Y O M. Yeah. Hey Dean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Name Ju. Yes. Oh. Bajal Lodge there. Bar Bar. Mama Yomdit was born in South Sudan and came to Canada in 2004. She is happy and grateful for the help and gifts from the members of the SSYC. She also told me how proud she was because all the girls from the SSYC are university graduates. Mama Yomdit doesn't speak English fluently, yet she speaks enough to get by. She noted that many problems pushed her to the streets and she's asking for your prayers to be able to get back on her feet. You can reach her through her Facebook page.
yom that's y o m j o h m a k o r ya <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. We are out of school. Okay. Bola, 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 my dad there. Yes. Yeah, they young. Okay. They young in this thing. In the in the high yeah, yeah. Okay. They young. Yeah, shukran, mama. Thank you, boy. What's your name? It's me, daddy. Daddy, tell daddy you from here. Daddy, tell me you come from here. Tell you. Yes. Lead you talk all of them for war. Tell them to dance for for heat for wet. Yeah. Tell them pray for you. Okay. Amen. Yeah, yeah. God bless you, mama. Thank you, my child. Okay. After giving out gift hampers at Olympic Plaza, the group moves on to their next stop. How are you, man? Good, good. Come, come. So just, just wait here. These guys are giving out stuff, so you can get something. Who's giving you what stuff, man? Uh, <laughs> she she's gonna give someone. That works for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. No, are you talking about stuff for me? They're giving you what stuff, no. Sadia. Yeah? The, are, are they gonna do a U-turn? Oh, that spot? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. What are you gonna be giving out to nowhere? Pardon? What are you giving out to nowhere? Just like um, like Nike and stuff, and um, posted the the drop-in center. Yeah, I know that. I just came to the drop-in center. Oh, okay. Oh, the, okay. Where the preaching is? Where preaching? Uh, by no, the... by Olympic. No, no that's that way. Oh, drop in center. center is over there? Yeah, that's that building. <laughs> oh, this building? Yeah. Building and the clients went burned down to the ground. Oh. oh, really? And trust me, they've tried three times so far. Why? Holy crap. See this parallel parking? Yeah. Oh, expert. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. She, she's like, why are you being so hard on me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
Hi. So, oh, I want to hear you. Yeah. 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 What, what's your name? Uh, Jock. Jock? Oh, Jock. Yeah. 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 So is. Is <laughs> do, do you guys have one of the, the men's humpers? Yeah, we're grabbing one. For, for him? Okay. They've been fighting it for a few for a while. Yeah. Like just making sure everything's coordinated. Yeah. And um, making sure like we get the right products and make sure we have uh, volunteers to help out. Okay. With the setting of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And then today they were able to actually get everything done, and now that's why we're here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, don't want to chase you guys down. Oh, sorry. You want some water, too? Okay. Yeah. Nice one. Don't fight. I have my good friends up. We have six in the other car. There's, there's more for the women. Oh, is there any more um, that in your car? That we took all the ones in my car. Yeah. So. Merry Christmas!
It's good. <laughs> we have to say, can we have more? <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good. So, what's your name? My name is Gary Decori. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's happening today? Right now, we're here with the South Sudanese Youth of Canada, and we're handing out holiday hampers to individuals in our community that are experiencing homelessness. Okay. What prompted this initiative? Um, well, homelessness is a huge crisis in Calgary. You don't have to look far to see someone that you know or you love on the streets. And with no, even within the South Sudanese community, this is a huge issue for various different reasons. I think the South, the South Sudanese community has some unique challenges that we face, from mental health to drug and substance issues, to inaccessible housing, job opportunities. So all these acclimate and result in people experiencing homelessness and housing crisis issues. So we noticed this as a community and we noticed this as members of the SSYC and thought that we wanted to come out and help as much as we can. Okay, you're doing an awesome job. Thank so you. how long did it take to plan it all? This planning took roughly two, two and a half months. Okay. Yeah, so we were out um, applying for grants and funding. We okay. were rallying up volunteers and just spreading the word around the community. Okay. So did all the gift hampers come from individuals or those uh, big donation? These are big donations, yes. We're okay. very thankful to the funding that we received for this to okay. make it possible. Okay. Um, so like today we are out here. What was the location? Right now we're at the drop-in center in Calgary. Yes. We started off at the Olympic Plaza and we moved on down over here. Okay. You, you're South Sudanese, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So have you seen a lot of the homeless from the South Sudanese community here? Yes, we have. It's, it's very sad to see people of all ages. I've seen people as young as myself and people older than my parents on the streets. It, it's a very big issue. Okay. So like, have you talked to any one of them? What have they told you about their story? Yes, for sure. We were seeing some earlier at the plaza, specifically South Sudanese. Yes. I was speaking with a gentleman who I actually knew from my own family. Okay. And he was just talking about how just circumstances ended up this way. Okay. I think that is what it really amounts to because no one can really pinpoint one reason why they're homeless or why they're experiencing homelessness. Yes. It's an acclimation of multiple issues. So okay. So he was just telling me he was experiencing hard times. Um, with jobs, like he couldn't find a job, yeah. and then he said things came to this. Okay. One of the elders I was talking to about the problem of homelessness, yes. and he noticed that you know the different groups in the community mm -hmm. work, they, they never work in conjunction, like the youth and the elders mm -hmm. and even the churches. Do you think it's a good idea for the youth, for example, to connect with all the other groups? A hundred percent. I think there's so much power in coming together as a community when we have um, segregated and separate separate efforts. Like right now, it's the youth going out and working. Yes. And we can only do so much, right? If we had the elders with us as well, if we had the church leaders with us as well, that just amounts to more people, more money, more funding, and more people out here on the streets letting everyone know that we're here, we're here to care for you, we're here to support you. And I think we do need to make an effort to have all these different groups combined together. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's nice talking to you. Yes. Thank yeah. you, Diddy. Yeah. Thank you so much for, you know, helping out. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Hi guys, my name is Didi and I'm a part of SSYC. I've been a member since 2019, so probably around four years now. And so essentially our community development task today includes our holiday hamper drive. So essentially throughout the day we were able to uh, assemble hampers and distribute them in various locations here in downtown Calgary. Yeah. And so essentially the cause is to basically cause a discussion around the homelessness issue going on within our South Sydney's community. So since the pandemic there has been a surplus of South Sydney's homeless people in regards to issues pertaining to mental health, drug abuse, or just overall post-traumatic stress disorder. So essentially just handing out these hampers and just discussing with our people and just gaining interviews and insight as to what's going on so we can determine the next steps as to how we can figure out programs or receive yeah. grants to mitigate the effects that are going on right now. Okay, there, there seems to be a lot of uh, homeless people from the South Sudanese community, right? 
on the streets. Yeah. Uh, have you talked to any one of them? Have they told you their particular stories? Yes, yeah, so I have spoken to a few of them, and essentially a lot of them have said that they've been abandoned from their families. Yes. But again, those uh, stories are very subjective because we don't know the situation that had caused yeah. the abandonment to occur to their families. Yeah. But what we have seen is just homelessness, so the lack of finances, lack of a place to live, yeah. and just food to eat. So that's essentially what's been going on right now. So what are some of the things uh, normal people out there can do to help you out in doing initiatives like this? Yeah, so essentially reaching out to organizations that are able to create programs, and these yeah. programs can be funded through the government of Canada, yeah. or even through non-for-profit or just grants and funding, so we can assist these individuals in finding homes, finding jobs, and just long-term assistance. Because right now what we're doing is very short-term. Yeah. By tomorrow morning, we don't know where these hampers are going to be, or whether or not they use the gift cards or not. Yeah. But at the moment, we're just trying to figure out exactly what our numbers look like, what yeah. the main patterns are, and how we can take this to larger powers in the city to actually assist us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you always been passionate about uh, helping out in initiatives like this? I have not. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't until okay. about this year when I was conference planning. Yes. And I realized how important it was to just get involved in the community and just see how helpful we were. Yes. So, yeah, creating this hamper drive just really created my passion for sure. So, oh, okay. this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, what's the connection between you guys uh, like the uh, as, as, as the youth? So I feel like the connection is very strong essentially because we are we were raised here in Canada, right? Okay. And based through like the stories that we hear and a lot of us who go back home, we're very aware of the things that do occur in our home. So with that being said, we have a lot of youth in the diaspora here who experience very similar upbringings and having that identity disconnect between being a Canadian and being a South Sudanese. Yeah. So just to have the dialogue between us youth and figure out that we have like a language gap, a yes. parental gap, there's trauma that's passed down between mothers and children and just basically having those discussions yeah. between us is so important and knowing that we have the resources here as youth yeah. here in calgary makes it so much better okay yeah. what one of the disconnect is in terms of language uh do you speak your south sudanese language i do i speak my tribal language your, okay how about juba arabic i don't okay <laughs> my mom does, oh okay your mom does yeah. so um when did you pick up the language uh did you pick it up as a kid or like yeah. how did you, yeah so from an early age from as long as i, I can remember so our dad used to speak to us in English, and our yes. mom speaks to us in Jenka. Okay. And to this day, my mom still speaks to us in Jenka. She's been yeah. here over 20 plus years, okay. and still very fluent with us. Yeah. What, what made it easy for you to pick it up? Just essentially the language being spoken at home so frequently. Oh, okay. And just the ability to translate things for, between our parents to the actual like, English language. Oh, okay. So it makes it easy for you, for example, to yeah. talk to relatives back home? Yeah. Ha have you been back to South Sudan? I have not been South, back to South Sudan, but I do intend on going. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Well, it's a beautiful country. Yeah. Uh, please find the time to visit. I will. And you, you, you know, considering you speak the language, it will be much easier for you. I completely agree. So, uh, what, what makes you identify as South Sudanese? Do you feel like you're South Sudanese because of birth or like... No, I do feel like I'm South Sudanese essentially because of the culture and just the large South Sudanese culture here in Calgary. Okay. So, a lot of the community parties, events, are, allow me to identify with my oh, okay. How about the, your peers out there who would want to pick up a language, a South Sudanese language, an African language? Yeah. Uh, how would you tell them? Uh, like, what made it easy for you? What are some of the things they can do yeah, to pick it up? Essentially, just speaking with someone who strictly speaks the language. So my okay. mother, like I said, she speaks Denka strictly 100% all the time. Okay. So having someone who's constantly in your ear just speaking to you in that language yes. allows you to pick up, engage in conversation, just making it easier for you to learn it. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and then, um, are you passionate about the foods too? I am very passionate about the food. I would love to learn how to cook the food, so one day when I get married, I can figure out how to do it. Okay, okay. Yeah. What, what are some of the South Sudanese foods you know? Oh my goodness. That I know how to cook, I only know how to make mulah khudra at yes. the moment. Yes. But we're learning and we're expanding our palate. Okay, ca yeah. ca can you do the kisra? I cannot. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Uh, w what about school? Uh, what are you doing in school? Yeah, so I finished last year with a bachelor's degree in psychology and a minor in history. Yes. So now we're just in the process of actually working for a not-for-profit organization. Yes. And then the plan is to essentially go back to school and get my higher education. For sure. Oh, okay. Uh, what, what, what do you want to do for your higher education? I would love to be a doctor, a physician. So oh, nice. God. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think there's lots of peers out there that can, you know, yeah. uh, motivate you in that direction. I completely agree. Yeah, uh, you guys, the South Sudanese Youth of Canada, recently had um, a conference here in Calgary. Yes. Were you part of the organizing team? I sure was. Okay. Yes. How did that go? Uh, it went very well, truth be told. We were able to get a large 
audience of youth to be, uh, to be able to attend this conference and engage in our workshops and just, again, understand the concerns within our community. So the conference was mental health based, so just having that dialogue on a larger platform is really important for all of us. Oh, okay. Yeah. For, for those who do not know the South Sudanese Youth of Canada, yeah. tell us what is it all about? So the South Sudanese Youth of Canada includes South Sudanese youth from all over Canada, hence okay. the name. Okay. And essentially it just uh, involves conference planning, community development tasks around our various cities. So our cities include Winnipeg, Regina, Sask Sask Saskatoon, yes. Edmonton, and Calgary. And the plan is to reach expander into BC, Columbia okay. and Ontario, essentially. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, what, what are some of the activities that you guys involve yourself in, apart from doing what you're doing today? Yeah, so essentially just meet, uh, city meetups. So I believe in Edmonton a few years ago, there was an initiative where essentially we just had, we invited a bunch of South Sudanese youth to just come to a common space and just eat and discuss and just simply play games. So not everything has to be as serious and talking about our real life issues. Yeah. But it could just be something as simple as engaging a dialogue and just introducing yourself. Okay. Yeah. I know one of the activities you guys um, did was basketball. Do you play any sport? I don't play any sports at the moment. My okay. height is useless at this point. <laughs> Okay. But no, in high school I did play basketball, but not anymore. anymore. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, so what do you, uh, what do you think um, young people like yourself out there yeah. who don't want to involve themselves in community, mm -hmm. how would you encourage them to join initiatives or groups like yours? Yeah. No, so essentially I do understand that everybody can be outgoing or can be outside on the space. Yes. But even something as simple as writing an email, writing a grant for something that you're passionate towards and taking that money and even giving it to an organization that can assist your dreams or your passions will go a very long way. Okay. And essentially just engaging in dialogue, going on social media, figuring out what groups are around near your city. So even if we're not at a city nearby, okay. you could ask someone who could know another individual. Yeah. And just understanding that it's like you don't have to be the most extraordinary individual to help. Yeah. Just something as simple as a like or a repost or even just sharing a testimony yes. in regards to just any personal issues regarding your South Sudanese experience here in Canada goes a really long way yeah. because there are other people who do relate with you as well. Okay. For the future, what are some of the uh, South Sudanese Youth of Canada projects? So for the future, at the moment, we do have an online Zoom okay. link in regards to just discuss having conversations with South Sudanese youth here in Canada yes. and South Sudanese individuals in South Sudan itself. Yes. And just, of course, bridging that space between the diaspora and those back home. Yes. And then again, our annual conference that will be happening next year. Oh, okay. By the grace of God. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Wh where is the conference going to be next? Because the last one was in Calgary. So that's to be determined. Oh, okay. It's still very okay. Early at the moment, but we'll get okay. There. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you so much for talking to me. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Jackie, I'm gonna go. Jackie, make you leave me. My I am the goat, so take it easy. Take it easy. Greatest of all time, and I've been so easy. My to do, pull on a hussy on a beast. Jackie, I'm gonna go. Go and leave a fire. Maybe die in a hide in the higher up a school who carry tires. I'm gonna talk to Zatu Halas, get expired. My school, like in Iran, I'm a Zaya.